Hello, YouTubes. Uh, chat, say hello to YouTube, please. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. We are in for another VOD review. This is probably the most one-sided uh, series that we had in the entire playoffs. Quick spoilers about what's about to happen. You got a couple more seconds. The Dragons took this 3-0. And it wasn't particularly close, and we're going to break it down as it goes on, but it just, Mayhem just didn't look like they had anything left in the tank. Uh, we watched this, we watched this VOD yesterday uh, of Mayhem playing against Chengdu. They played well. They played a very different style, but coming up against the Dragons, they just, I feel like not having that time to prepare for the match really hurt the Mayhem, while Dragons could watch the Mayhem play, take a break, take a step back, and then come back and, you know, just dunk on the Mayhem, which they do. One of the counters, the ideas of, like, they were just tired, obviously they had to travel to Hawaii, time zones, having to play matches back-to-back. -back. Another thing on top of that, that I think needs to be considered is, Mayhem don't even lose because I think of counter strats by the Dragons. They literally just lose in a head-to-head -head matchup. We're about to see it. They're about to play Oasis uh, Gardens, and then we're going to play University. And Dragons plays Brawl on both of these maps and wins. And that's a very bad look for Mayhem because that is like the worrying sign because this is supposed to be the one thing that Mayhem had up their sleeves is their brawl was better than everyone else's. Uh, so as soon as they lost these first three rounds, I think you sort of felt that this was a slippery slope that we're going to get off of. But let's just get this started. You got to love the title typo. I did not. I would never mistype in the... I didn't mistype in the... Have I been debated? Five, then? Then? Four, then? Three, oh yeah, it's definitely one, then with an E. Three, okay, yeah, yeah, alright. The hey, they, they don't they don't pay me to write good, they talk uh, they pay me to speak good. I can't even do that, so who really knows what's going on? So we got Brawl v Brawl. Uh Shanghai Dragons got the first opening position. Okay, OG on the low ground. Great wall by, uh, by Fletta. Just making sure that Fletta... Gargoyle goes way too aggressive to sort of counter that aggression from the Shanghai Dragons. Iziaki gets the window up first. Bada bing, bada boom. And that's the end of the first round. So we j we're just doing this match for the review today. So we're just going to break this one down. And then we'll go on. You know, we're running out of VODs, so I don't want to run out of VODs before, you know, next weekend, so. There's a couple of Contenders VODs I, kind of, I think I want to come have a look at. And some other stuff I want to look at throughout next week, but yeah. We'll probably finish all of the uh, main Melee VODs by this week. Beat difference? Yeah, Lee J Gun having beat already is pretty nice. He does get a he does get beat very quickly. I think that's probably on the back. He must use a lot of healing. Uh, healing amps instead of speed amps. I wonder if that's, like, the difference. So, they get slime again? How does slime get punished here? So slime gets caught on the wrong side, just gets body blocked a little. The high noon and the window by BQB kind of... ...walled off. Doesn't get a lot of value. And from that, OG gets run over because he's just uh, isolated a little bit, so... Kind of some poor ultimate usage by Mayhem, but also I think that's primarily on slime for just being out of position and getting caught. Iziaki dying late here is pretty bad. Is Lee J Gun gonna live to tell the tale? 1v1. Oh god. I should have gone for it. Lee J Gun would have won that. So Void also doesn't have a mech, but. You never got to due to an early start of the tournament? Yeah, we, like there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that we can have a look at, so. I'm not too worried about the VODs, I just like, I can't do two VODs a day anymore. So we got a high noon from uh, from Lip on the high ground. Gargoyle's just not even paying attention. Gargoyle's made some pretty bad mistakes in this first round. He has Matrix as well. I don't know. Did Gargoyle not get that sound cue? It feel like he didn't play around that at all. Like, he had, like, a full set of Matrix. Like, he would have been perfect prime time to 
to hit him with it. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. That was weird. Gangnam Jin gets punished by Flatter. Big goes down by Lee Jae Gon, and that should just be the round. It's, well, that uh, fight, especially with Izzy Aki doing that, dropping that. Whoa, what? Slime? Gargoyle, they know Gargoyle's dead and they know their team is resetting. Oh, don't agree with this decision. They get Lee J gone for it. Oh, that's a good pin on a Void as well. So they get Lee J gone and Void for that. So honestly, not the worst beat in the world. They shouldn't have got that much value from it. But... We'll see, we'll see how they go from here. Lip stuck on the high ground. Oh, what a get- <laughs> I love fate turning around. Look at this. Oh, Fletter went right as fate went left. Oh, no. Look at fate turn around. He even has a high noon up and he's like, wait, what the fuck happened? <laughs> Where did- how did Fletter die? It's a bit of a mistake. Slime feeds again. Slime has had an awful first round. Same with Gargoyle. I think both Slime and Gargoyle have kind of been the, the primary feeders so far in this round. Oh, Gargoyle is going to live to tell the tale. Shatter. Oh, good Shatter by OG. Catches them under the on the low ground. It's going to get mailed as well. And that should be it, just the end of that round. Primary feeders, yeah. I usually teabag my dead teammate too, yeah. Hey yeah, that was, that was, I think if Fleta doesn't die there, they probably, the dragons probably go on to hold that, but hey. I f people shit on OG a lot, but I feel like Gargoyle is the weakest link on the man. Uh, I don't agree with that. I think Gargoyle is generally pretty good. I think his D.Va is not his best. I would say he's definitely better at the Sigma. But I think, I think Gargoyle is generally pretty good and pretty consistent. I think Slime is very volatile, but he's been pretty good throughout the main melee. Like, I honestly don't think they really have, like, a crazy weak link. Um, OG, obviously, you know, we talk a lot about OG feeding, but he's been, he was pretty good throughout this, uh, throughout this tournament as well. So that's, and that's, like, what you attribute their success to, but. All right, so Fletter drops the mail. Lee Jagon feeds a little. Oh, Fate drops a shatter. How does Fate miss e miss everybody on that? His Zaya, yeah, his Zaya grab on Jib was very bad. I think we can all agree to that. Yeah, that's actually kind of crazy that BQB got out of that. That's an interesting high noon by BQB. Oh, Yaki almost got got. Gets hit by Fate. This would have been a really good fight for Florida if they had managed to keep the point. If Florida managed to keep the point, they get to like 70, 80% um, cap time, and then they this is final fight territory, right? But because of that, they actually uh, get back into this fight. Immortality blocked it, I think? No way. There's no way, the immortality. I'm actually curious to see if that was an actual, actually a thing. Oh, I don't think so, I think he rolled out of it. It, it doesn't seem like it, you know? I think, I thought Blizzard fixed the immortality blocking shadow. I'm not sure if they did fix that. Is Fate the best main tank in the league? He can play at all main tank to a top five level. Can anyone else? No, Fate is not the best main tank we have in the league. Not by a long shot. Um, I think Fearless is by far just head and shoulders above Fate. As much as I think Fearless's Wrecking Ball isn't that good and we haven't seen that much, like, I would still put Fearless over Fate. Fate 
isn't very good at Ryan. Fate is okay at Winston. Like, there's... There's a few players I would say are above Fate. I would say Fate and OG are around, like, the same level in my eyes. But, like, Fearless is better. I think Jangu's better. I think Gaga's better. I think, um... Then you have, like, Smurf and Super. Like, I think Super is probably better than Fate. I would take just Super over just Fate. Smurf, yeah, Smurf, do we haven't seen Smurf play at all, but I assume Smurf is probably, I would probably put Smurf over Fate as well, I agree. Fate didn't have a very good performance at the May Melee. And like, I think a lot of people uh, give him a lot of credit because he's on the Shanghai Dragons, but I don't think Fate had, I think Fate was very clearly the weak link on the Dragons in this tournament. Uh, maybe, maybe Lee, you can make an argument for Lee Jae Gon, but Gangnam Jin gets caught there. I, how does Gangnam Jin get caught? Super Monkey? I think Super Monkey is memed out of, out of control, but I, Super's Monkey is actually very good. I feel like if Super, Super could easily play, uh, Monkey at a very, very high level in the Overwatch League if they, if he just got practice on it. He has the mechanics for it, he just needs to scrim it and stuff like that, but because Smurfs always played it for the last couple of years, like, I think Super Monkey isn't that good, as good as it could be. Yaki goes down, throwing the mail. Oh. Yeah, that should just be it. Fate Monkey greater than Super Monkey? But the thing is, you say that, but we also haven't really seen Super play Monkey, to my point, right? Super doesn't really play Monkey. Uh, in out. Sato, yes, I would, uh, I would say Sato is better than Fate. I would say Mono is better than Fate as well. You know? Just saying. Is Smurf Ryan good? We haven't really, it, it, for the same reason we haven't seen Super play Winston, we haven't seen Smurf play Ryan, right? I can't think of all the main tanks that play main tank very well. There are, there are a lot. But like, I would say like, uh, Fate, I don't think also plays them very well. Like if we're talking to the pedigree that like Fate plays Ryan and the pedigree that Fate plays Winston, like I think there are a lot of players in that realm, right? Like I think Fate, Fate is a good main tank. I think he's, he's, he's fine for the dragons. He's not a fearless, right? I think if Shanghai had fearless, I think Shanghai would be like ridiculous right now. But I think Fate is fine. Like, he's a fine main tank to have. I don't think he's the best main tank in the league. And I think he's, I would say he's like top eight, probably in the league. Um, but I, I wouldn't say he's, the, he's one of the best. This is an absolute back and forth. I don't even remember this being that kind. I'm sort of talking about main tanks. It's just been an absolute brawl for the last, like, forever. It's a very good final uh, mail by Fletter, kind of putting the, a stop on that. We saw Smurf play Ryan against Houston, yeah, and that's it. Like, but I, 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 I attribute that to the fact that I'm sure Smurf has not played Ryan in scrims. Like, he's he hasn't been practicing it. Doesn't mean he can't play it. He just hasn't been practicing. He's it's not like it's not well oiled in this meta. You need to make sure you're consistently practicing and you're learning how it's played in a certain meta in metas as well, right? I'm ODing on the fake copium. <laughs> it's fine. As I said, like, I I think there is definitely a lot of redeeming qualities about fate. Um, I, as I've been saying. But I, I, I don't think I would agree that he is a, he is the best main tank in the league. Uh, it, and that's fine. Like, you, if fate was the best main tank in the league, Shanghai would be so stacked. And I think they would be, a, be able to, like, take it to, like, Dallas Fuel and stuff like that and have a better chance of winning the league. But fate is fine. Like, you know, it's hard to get, like the best in the world at every single role, like. Bumper to dragons would be like pint of fuel. Man being out of the league for like two years, we don't know how good he would be, yeah. And then, and then it opens the question of like, how good was Bumper in comparison to the rest of the team? Great boot by Lee Jae Gun pushing OG into the, into the drink. That gives them so much space. So now all of a sudden, where they got fucking, Oh, wow, that was pretty bad by Lip. <laughs> Lip even knew he was coming. Oh, 
Or maybe he didn't until it happened. But yeah, that was pretty bad by Lip. Oh, great window by Izyaki getting the kill on the slime as well. And Fisher, I could see, I could definitely see Fisher being good in this meta. I also think this is a Winston meta, and did we ever really see much Bumper Winston? Did Bumper have a good Winston? I want to say no, right? Like he was known for his rhyme, but why do I feel like his Winston? Maybe his Winston was better than I thought it was going to be. Actually, it was all right, right? I don't think it was like it went on. You know, he's not fearless, but I think it was fine, right? If I remember the little bits that he played, it it was it was okay. Did Bumper even have a good Ryan? He knew his he knew his limits pretty well. It would have been curious to see Bumper play on any team that wasn't the Vancouver Titans as a main tank, right? Like, it's one it opens up that can of worms of was Bumper great or were the Vancouver Titans great, right? And that it, 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 Bumper's style was just enabled by that fact. No one will ever know. Bumper just lives rent free in our brains is like just an absolute fucking chat, and that's okay, right? Like you don't need to have those answers, right? No one, anyone who thinks like one way or the other is probably just like making big assumptions. Oh, so we got a, we got a flank high noon from Lip. And I think this is Dragons just upping the tempo. And I actually really like how they did this. It seemed like they, they were playing much more proactively, trying to displace OG, trying to displace the rest of the team. Something that we didn't really see from them in the past when they were playing the Brawl. They were very passive, very slow. But they're really upping the tempo with their beats, with their uh, high noons. Lee J Gun's dead again. Nice pin. Making assumptions what we're good at though, that's true. That's literally all we do here. Slime uses a beat to close this out. That's another pretty mediocre beat by Slime. It gives them a lot of positioning, but I don't think it's actually going to give them the punish that they need. Yeah, like... That beat wasn't really good enough. Izyaki's about to get window here. All right, they get out flux though. Get out flux, you take that. Everyone get out. I think the main thing for Shanghai this time, it felt like they were improving each match. I completely agree. I don't know who is making these adaptations, whether it's coaching or what's going on, but Shanghai did a great job of making a mistake and then learning from it and not really making the same mistake again. Um... I think they kind of sort of hit their wall against the Dallas Fuel in the Grand Finals. But I think this match in particular shows, like, the adaptation that the Dragons did with their brawl, with their style. And, like, just playing something that they did, you know, two days earlier, one day earlier, and making it better. Uh, and that's hard to do. That's hard to do because they don't obviously have time to practice that. Lip gets BQB. I also think uh, the Mayhem are getting caught a lot. Wow, he just got murdered. The, the, especially in this map, it just feels like the dragons are playing very rotate heavy and very flanky. And may, that's how the Mayhem play, but they're not ready for the counter. Like, it feels like Shanghai is doing a great job of punishing flanks. Yeah, this is when Florida had to play directly after Chengdu. And as, as I said in the in the free... Uh, in the preamble to this VOD review of... it's We need to remember that they are playing very tired... Uh, having to travel, all that kind of stuff, did just come off a map, weren't able to prepare for this match as well as the Shanghai Dragons, and that definitely plays a factor. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, it's a 2-0 on uh, two brawl maps for the da Shanghai Dragons against Florida Mayhem that they win. Uh, also, I rated Yaki this whole tournament, but his impact felt like it was missing. Uh, I actually think that what happened was the Dragons decided to not take a Winston mirror. And I'm actually very surprised that Florida decided to take them to Hanamura. Um, the Dragons to Hanamura. I think putting... I think this decision made no sense to me if you're the Florida Mayhem because they're playing... They, we actually saw the Mayhem play this against the Shanghai Dragons in their first series, right? And they almost got full held by the Fleta Farah. Do you guys remember? Fleta was like solo barraging OG on like cooldown. Um... And they fought Mayhem almost got full held, and this ended up in a draw? Or... Yeah, like, they just played this, like... I, I remember last time Florida didn't win this convincingly, and I think 
they want to get to a point where they can play their comfort of like the Winston Anna or the Wrecking Ball Zen. And I don't think this map enables that. I think if anything, this gives you a massive edge of playing the Reinhardt Symmetra style on, uh, on attack or playing double shield on defense. Like I feel like there's a lot of different cheese strategies and different styles that you can play that better suits the Shanghai Dragons than it does the Florida Mayhem. Because Florida Mayhem, they don't have a lot of flexibility with the hero, with the people that they play, right? BQB has to play the hit scan. Yaki, you really want to be on that Tracer. You don't really want him on the May. His May is improved, but still not great. Yaki Echo is okay, but really they just want hit scan Tracer and then OG on the Winston, ideally. Uh, so I, it was very weird to me that Mayhem decided to take them to this map. Um, but we'll see how it plays out. I think this is the map... I don't think this is the map that we saw in, in entirety, right? Because... Uh, am I correct about this? Where Florida... This is the map where the broadcast went down? And we didn't see this map? Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. Five, four, three, two, one. Attackers incoming. I like this. Defend objective A. Broadcast went down, but the game stayed up, so we, should, so we should get to see it. Yeah, like, it was literally, like, it had nothing to do with the game. It was literally 100% broadcast. Like, like, our whole infrastructure, like, all the software that we use for, uh, like, viewing, talking about the game, all that kind of stuff, like, uh, recording, all that kind of shit, crashed. Like, it, the whole server just went down. So the game is not affected because that's the... You know, obviously, the game has nothing really to do with broadcast. And then I'm really glad that the Overwatch League decided to let the players play it out, right? Just let the game go. It happened, like, directly at the start of the Dragon's attack after comps have been shown as well. So it's like, I really respected that they just let it play, and then they gave us the, the highlights of what happened. Join Ask. Uh, John Ask, thank you very much for the Prime Gaming sub. Welcome to the fam. So we're going to see a Winston Anna. So this is the adaptation that the Mayhem are doing from last time. I don't really like the Winston Anna here. I feel like it's very hard for the Winston to get in and do anything, right? Like, the reason you play your Wrecking Balls, the reason you play your Sim TPs, or you rush, or like you, you do these big scoots around is because it's very hard to displace the defensive team. So they actually do get their Winston Diva Tracer in. This all of a sudden it, it goes onto the dragons, right? Dragons should go aggressive. They need to get aggressive on one side. They need to go aggressive on the coast side, or they need to go aggressive in main on the supports. They don't really do either. I don't like this engage by OGE. I feel like this gives up their entire advantage, right? If you're the mayhem, you have this positioning. I think. I think you don't have to do anything here. I feel like by jumping in here, it's almost as if they jumped in here. Like, OG got so low, and now they're fighting on a frontwards, frontwards trajectory into an Orisa, which is literally the best case scenario for the Orisa, right? So... That was a weird dive by Florida, especially seeing as they got in so well. BQB gets lip. Lee J Gun should die for that as well, yeah. Gangnam Jin dies to the Orisa, bleeding out over time. Void gets slime. OG gets void. Like, this just seems really weird, right? Like, you have a disconnect of half the team went aggressive onto the point, and half the team for the Mayhem went into this room. And they got two picks off the bat. They got, uh, they got Lee Jagon, and they got Lip. Theoretically, they should never lose this fight. The only way they lose this fight is if they take, if they take this, like, split decision. And like now they can't really, because they didn't go to the point, they don't have that point pressure. Yaki dies to Fletter. And now you open up this whole can of worms, right? I don't know why BQB high noons at this point. It's a little bit too early. I would say three seconds too early. Great touch by Lip. Fletter comes in, gets nanoed by it, and just murders OG. Like that's, that really can't happen. Like you can't let that happen. And then, but that's just sick play by Flutter, right? Kills the Winston, gets the copy off, goes the Diva. This will give him enough time to stall everything out, right? Does he gonna get bombed for this? I don't know if he's gonna get bombed. He is gonna get bombed. The bomb was kind of tragic, but now look at how displaced they are. 
This feels like mayhem, just not playing coordinated or together at all. Like, this seems like really poor communication. While uh, dragons, on the other hand, are doing a great job. Like, it feels like Florida's just panicking to win when Florida Shanghai is playing very tempered. Yeah. Bit of a throw. Bit of a throw there. I'm actually surprised Yaki made that out. That's actually kind of crazy. He literally blinked past the whole team. Is OG's ball not good enough? No, I think they didn't want to play ball because last time they played this, the ball wasn't very effective because Shanghai did a very good job of shutting down flanks. Uh, so it feels like they don't want to play that. I honestly don't think their comp is awful, right? Like, it's playing to their strengths. As I said, you got the Winston, you got the Ana. I just think they're not playing it right. I think they their synergy and coordination really lacked in this map. Like, I think Florida Mayhem closed that fight out nine times out of ten. But just some bad decisions really sort of threw that away. He's, has Yaki thrown a pulse? I don't think so. There's no one we've seen. That is a good flux. Oh, there's the pulse. For lip. OG stuck on the point. Ugh, I don't think that bon I think Fate would want that bongo back. So say I fucking love these VOD reviews, King. Having a, a beer and enjoying it, y'all. Thank you very much, Simbabble. I'm glad you've been enjoying it. It's been fun. It's been fun. Alright. Why Kree instead of Ash? Because I think they want to play at a faster tempo. The problem with Ash is that you can get stuck at choke just shooting in, while McCree it allows you to like roll in and have some point presence and that kind of stuff with the flashbang. I think that's the reason behind the, the McCree instead of the Ash. It's just more combat orientated instead of just sitting at choke because the whole co rest of the comp for Mayhem really needs to, you know, play aggressive. So, at least that's what I think. So they nano echo in again. Iziaki's in trouble, but does a good job. Fletter kills Slime. OG gets nothing out of his prime. Will get slept. That's the worst place to get slept because that means he literally gets negative value from it. Fletter turns into a McCree. I don't know how I feel about these Fletter copies most of these times. Well, that one's gonna work. OG gets Iziaki. Pulse Bomb gets the copy. But yeah, they just can't get their front line in, right? Their back line? Their back line's just stuck in this area, right? So their front line feels like they have to go aggressive and get value. And like, this is the first time we really saw BQB, OG, and Yaki get a ton of value other than the opening fight. They just, like, Slime can't do anything, right? He's just trying to walk through fate on that this Arissa. Yeah, and that's that's just hard to watch because Mayhem really should have had that first fight locked in. Three Anna's duplicated, yeah. Who do the Mayhem need to focus? Uh, they need to find a way. So here's the thing, is they need to find a way to get their team in. Like, all they needed to do was get their backline into this backside. Or, like, make it so that their frontline and their backline wasn't massively disconnected. Because what was happening is, their frontline was getting in, and then their backline was stuck at choke, like the McCree, Anna, Brig. They're all stuck here. And it just felt like they never re right? They never found a person to dive. You don't want to try and kill the Orisa. The Orisa is a bait, right? Dragons want you to kill the Orisa. You need to find an effective dive onto, like, somebody that also enables your backline to get in. Maybe the comp is just weak. Like, it's just not a good comp because you it's impossible to sink your frontline and backline. Obviously, there are scenarios where if you get a good dive, then, like, on the frontline, then your backline can enter and that, that's what they did in the first fight. They just split up. Like, ha half the people went to the point, half the people walked into this room. And that ended up getting one-for-one one trades uh, for the dragons, and the dragons just got a couple of important picks, and that was it, right? Hey. How doing? Why play the Brig? I actually think um, the Brig against the Lip Tracer, like Lip originally started on something else, I think. I think he would have been better off playing a Mercy Ash. I think if they played like Mercy Ash Anna, it actually would have been better for them because that would have provided more threat from BQB at the choke. Um, 
You, see, you know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, BQB's damage boosted. He can apply a ton of pressure on his own, and it also means that the back line is doing something while they're sitting there. Thank you very much for money. Maybe that's the solution. Flipsy, thank you for the 200 bits. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I uh, had a very good day, so... Just getting some, uh, getting some VOD reviews in, getting some streams in, then we got Raid Night tonight, so I'm looking forward to it. Mercy's so good here, they had the Ash Echo, yeah, so, and that's it. Actually, that's, like, probably a good point here, is it feels like Slime is very committed onto this Brig and doesn't really want to play the Mercy. Like, I think Mercy is probably valuable. Uh, here they are playing the Winston Diva. I actually don't really like the Ash Echo while they're playing Winston Diva Brig Anna, but I know the hold is pretty good here, so we're gonna see. Like, Brig is very good at counter dive. It removes a lot of the effectiveness of Flutter, of Fate, and stuff like that. So I don't hate the Brig. Uh, especially when you need to be ready for a lot of different comps from uh, Dragons. But Mayhem on their attack in the last round, they could have easily switched off the Brig at any moment to really sort of give themselves a slight advantage. Looks like Dragons are charging a Nano, right? That seems to be what they're trying to do. Walk in, charge a Nano. Void's going in, Fate's going in, taking damage. 60% to Nano on Iziaki. Gangnam Jin's at 50%. So unsteady. This should be a pretty good Nano for Fate. He can just jump to the right side on the Ana. Onto the Ana Brig Echo. Oh, Lip gets BQB as well. How do the Florida Mayhem hold this fight? Oh, the Nano! Nano him! <gasps> what? How is- no, what? There is no way. They literally have this in the bag if they just nano fate off the bat. Just nano fate. Why does he nano the diva? This backline is so susceptible to this nano Winston. It is going to force their entire team back into this choke. And dragons literally could just run to point at that point and then they have an advantage. Trade the nano for point advantage. Was Fate in front? No, it looked like he changed. It looks like he actually intentionally put it onto the D.Va. That was definitely intentional. Like, imagine if Fate was Nano for this instead of the D.Va. Like, look how much pressure would be applied here. So they do get the drag- Is Yaki onto the point? But yeah, as he said, like, they just- It didn't apply enough pressure. Fate should- Oh, OG gets his primal at the right time as well. Wow. Oh my god, Lee Jagon is still alive. He did a good job of living for that. What happened on the Fate Primal? That seems really bad. Like, I, I, that's... That seems like such a simple mistake that they made. Oh, Fate is so close to death here. He got his Primal, good job. Oh, I get slept. That was about to be a very good Primal. If Fate doesn't get slept there, I think Slime's dead there as well, so... Big plays. Bob on the point. This does feel a little sloppy by Shanghai. It feels like everyone's just using their own ults. Slime gets a rally, does a good job. <gasps> Ooh, that was scary if you are Slime. Oh, okay, it, it was on the ground. Shanghai's gonna reset. Smart decision. Ah, oh, shit. Void's lost his mech. It was an expensive fight. That was an expensive fight. It's interesting because I've never. Well, obviously, we've never seen this part of the this match before. But that that's such a that like this is that was such a bad decision. I feel like by Izayaki. To it, like, I feel like that was a free win, especially with Lip getting that kill on the BQB. Void gives up his diva bomb. Oh, he didn't really have much because he used it in the uh, fine anyway. Alright, we're gonna got this, get the same thing. Fate is literally about to have the exact same situation. Alright, Florida's gonna go first. I think if you're- you just disconnect from this if you are the Shanghai Dragons. You got the Valk. You got- you got copy out. You take those. And then you go in with Fate next, right? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now we nano Fate in with the Valk. Nano- There we go. Look- Wow, that seems really good, doesn't it? <laughs> Just instantly kills the backline. Imagine if he did that the first time. Um, kills the battle backline. Great play by Fate. Great. Honestly, it was a very nice deep dive. Like, that was... 
Limp gets caught by Yaki. Oh, OG gets a great dive as well on his own with his own nano with the primal. So they get out the diva bomb. So that's a lot of ults from the mayhem. I think if you're the Shanghai, like literally every single ult from the mayhem. I think if you're Shanghai dragons, you just need a. <laughs> I was about to say reset and go in with your primal bob. Why would fate go for that? He has to know his Anna, both of his supports are down, right? Just when you think Florida is the one, this has honestly been a very sloppy map in terms of just execution with like ultimates and, and dive strategies. Uh, so Florida still don't have ults and they have a bob, so they don't have the primal anymore. So throw the bob in. I like the bob to point. I think this is going this is going to force the mayhem instantly to point, right? It's going to be on Gargo. Void? What is happening? So this is a great decision. I think I would have liked to have seen the dragon sort of get that backline in, but they're playing slow. Void just turbo ints. Oh, wow. They just got Gargoyle Mech as well. If, if, if Void just went to point, they would have been fine. They trade Max though. Florida's gonna get ults. Yeah, like they're about to get their Nano, they're about to get their Copy. Lip gets Yaki. How does Lip get Yaki? Oh, looks like Lip, their backline's finally walking in. Lip gets a couple of kills. Oh man, Yaki just got Copy as well. Lip just went sicko mode. Nano Baby Diva? Oh, is that what that was? I was like, wait, what is that voice line? Oh yeah, it is Nano Diva. He gets the Tracer and gets Mech back? Hey, that's worth, honestly. OG gets Void as well. Dude, legitimately Lip is the only person deciding to not to drop the spaghetti on the ground. They get the, re the res on. They just have, they just have too much. Yeah, the bob there as well. They, it, Lip opened this fight up with a bob and ended the fight with a bob. Legitimately, the dragons are lucky they have Lip. They really did not deserve to win that. Honestly, either to the mayhem, but yeah, it, that was that was not a very good map from either of those teams. Some very questionable ultimate usages. Lip wasn't having none of it. Lip's like, hey, don't worry, we're gonna win this. Wobble wobble, motherfucker. Fun fact, cuz I've been banned on Twitter over a year now by reinforce. You mean blocked? So I made a joke of when Plat Chat was saying the Sparkle is taking Paris down, but then he owned, so I tweeted a clip of them saying it and put question marks and got Ban Fremo Sag. I just want to be with my dad Johnny. <laughs> you gotta be Yeah, I assume you mean blocked. Yeah, it's yeah. The problem with that kind of stuff is it's like I, I know where Johnny is coming from, that kind of stuff. Because the weird stuff, there is stuff that happens like that. Uh, where, you know, we on the desk, plat chat, myself just talking about the game. You got, you have to put yourself out there and say interesting things and stuff like that. And like, give your opinion, right? It's, it's very frustrating when people uh, go back, way back. In like, I call them hindsight Harrys. Who like, go back and then like, pick it apart. Because they, it's kind of like the Sparkle D tier Tracer thing, right? It's like, back then, it was a very reasonable take. No one was upset that I put Sparkle in D tier. Like, everyone was upset about Flatter, Profit, but nobody gave a shit about Sparkle, right? But then in hindsight, when Sparkle goes on a the thing, they like, they like point at you. And it's very frustrating because it, people, it kind of feels like people are doing it to tear you down and like that kind of stuff. And you know, we can take a lot and we do, but sometimes things just, 
sometimes things just get under your skin and stuff like that. So you gotta be careful. If you if you are a fan of someone, you gotta be careful what you send them because you know, as much as it's all banter, like it sometimes you know it can be taken the wrong way. I'm on weekend race. It's time to be irresponsible and watch streams. Party. Sometimes we troll you and you've had enough of our shit. Yeah, exactly, right? Don't send custard dildos or saltines. What do you mean I love dildos and saltines? Well, okay. I love when I receive them because that's fun. I, I do not love dildos. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fun aspects of that. That's not, that's sort of not what, like, the band. I'm gonna stop talking. So... Are you gonna do the final day? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, after this, I'm gonna go play some ranked. You're not alone, this cast of <laughs> Guys, I swear to God. Attackers incoming. Um. Objective A. What, are we, what was I saying? Uh, I'm surprised once again that the Florida Mayhem are going to Kings Row. I feel like Florida is putting all their eggs in the we are better than at brawl than you guys basket and i feel like after first map i don't know if i agree with that decision uh i guess maybe just trying to keep running with it but i would have liked to have seen a monkey mirror matchup i honestly think florida mayhem playing the winston anna are better than the dragons for the exact reasons we saw like i think i think yaki can you know, own on the tracer? I think BQB hit scan can be enabled. I think it can be really good. But it felt like they just we didn't see OG going down playing what they were best at. You know what I mean? Did Yaki play? He played it on Hanamura. Yaki played it tracer on Hanamura for a bit. And like as I said, like I think the mayhem were better than the dragons on that ma that point uh, that map. That mayhem just made like. Some some critical mistakes at the wrong time. Why well, I think Dragons just made some pretty blatant mistakes. What do you think the Florida Rush? I you know Florida Rush was always okay. Like it's definitely not the best we have in NA. Like but going up against the Dragons, I think the the East region is way worse at Brawl other than like Philly, right? So I actually liked that Mayhem came out and played the Brawl in this tournament because it's something that they they thrived at. Um, Compared to everyone else in that tournament, but like, you know, if we were playing, if the Mayhem were playing against the San Francisco Shock or the Houston Outlaws, that kind of stuff, I wouldn't want to see them play Brawl at all. Alright, so holding close. Uh, Florida needs to be careful because Iziaki is going to get a Nano. That's going to be the win window, right? Like, everyone knows that the current window that is happening right now is Dragons are literally just trying to get their thing. Is Gargoyle going to feed again? Oh, Gargoyle! And then just the Gangnam Jin use the lamp as well. They're dead. It's, it's just fucking over. That is like literally the worst case scenario. Gargoyle has been punished by the dragons a lot in this series. What? Nano! I swear to God, if you guys don't start nanoing fate, I'm gonna scream. Oh, he wanted it as well. Just the synergy is a little off. Oh, God. This this fight is over. If they lose this fight... <sighs> like, come on. Come on. If I can synergize this shit in my ranked games, we can do this here. If they lose this fight, I'm gonna- I'm gonna lose it. It wasn't his fate. Oh, god damn it, Daz. <laughs> Alright, so we get a fast rotate by, uh, the Mayhem going on the high ground. Oh boy, he coming. Oh, I'm surprised he didn't run this all the way down. 
Lee J going and getting this back. Oh, not a monkey. Let's go. Oh, yeah, this is just too many ults. Oh, my God. What? Sorry, excuse me. What is going on over here? Gangnam Jin and Izyaki, why are you both here one health? How did this even happen? Gangnam Jin's on the flank. Oh, that was a good sleep by Izyaki. Dragons have a lot of ultimates. Get the res on Izyaki as well. That should just be it. Oh, okay. OG pins the Mercy. <laughs> that was kind of sick. Slimes back on the Lucio, but that should be it. Why was he out past Sachi? Because what happened was uh, Gangnam Jin was here. Uh, you know, healing his teammates and doing that kind of stuff. And when the dragons rotated up this way with their bat, the, with like their Mercy, Diva, and all that kind of stuff, Gangnam Jin needs to rotate around. So he does. I think his mistake was going all the way around because he's going up against respawners. So by going all the way around and contesting Izyaki, that is like a gamble. Uh, he probably could have gone to like here and then gone to like here and been fine. But yeah. Fade is turning up to be a bit of a bad pick. I really hope he can bring back consistency. Yeah, Fade, Fade's, all, Fade's kind of ha been like that for, you know, I would say ever since like season two Valiant. Like even when I played with him, you know, he was very inconsistent. He had games where he was just like nutty and he was just calling like a god and doing everything owning. And then he had games where he just like, he just, he kind of felt lost in the game and he kind of struggled. And you see that, he that happens in the dragons as well. Sometimes he looks really good when he's comfortable, when he understands his win condition. But then sometimes like in the grand finals, we'll break it down in the next match uh, versus Dallas. He just, he just kind of feeds a little bit, a little bit of feeding. So he needs to, he just needs to find, needs to be able to pull back a little bit. What was this diva bomb, my boy? <laughs> Void's fucking pissed. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't even know where he's just hitting an invisible wall. He, he was solid. Uh, Faye was solid on may Mayhem. I think he he still had some of that inconsistency at times as well. But yeah, he was solid. Faye was very solid in Mayhem, and like, and that's one of the things. I think everyone thinks Faye is going to be. I think he's going to be solid on the Shanghai Dragons as well, and he has been solid. He really has. Um, but he's definitely had a couple of moments where it's like, he just needs to live. Trying to do too much, maybe or something. I don't know. But also, you know, his support has been very. It feels like Fate doesn't get as much support as he has in the past, like historically, right? You know, just the, the way the nanos are going, he's not really getting the nanos, he's not really getting supported as much. It seems like there's a bit of a disconnect from time. So I think it might be a Shanghai thing. If they can work that out, you know, he, he'll do a great, he'll be great for the team. Oh, how, lip killing BQB there is so big. Like, it can't be understated how big that kill on the lip of BQB is. Like, all of a sudden, every, like, winning that team fight from Florida is irrelevant. They literally just lose the fight. And they need to make sure they get away from this fight. If they don't want... If they get caught here... Yeah, and sh dragons taste the water. Let's see the blood in the water, right? They know they just need to... If they can chase them down and get some kills, they're in a really good spot. That wall was really good against the bob. That bob could be enormous. Actually... This is okay because Bob is being pushed by the cart into, into value. <laughs> Mayhem need to go. Like they need to choose a direction. They need to run at the ash of the uh, brig. They can't just get to the point and then stop, right? Because here's what happens. They end up having to back up, give up too much space. All of a sudden Gargoyle tries to hold space. Yeah, it doesn't feel like Florida is playing this rush very well, like to their win condition against the Winston Dive. Feels like they're playing a little bit too passive and playing into the style of the Dragons. And that just routes back to my original criticism of, I'm surprised that they chose King's Row. What are the other hybrid maps that we have in the pool uh, for this tournament? Um, 
I can think of everyone that's not in the poll. Photo May copy? Numbani's not in it. Photo May cop copy was the Icon Vault, Blizzard World. Yeah, I feel like Blizzard World or Icon Vault just like plays into Mayhem strengths way more than the Dragons. Like may d maybe not Blizzard World because, you know, they can play the f Iziaki Zen Fate Wrecking Ball, but at least I definitely think Ike would have been way better for the uh, for the mayhem. So, because they could have definitely played Brawl on the first point and then switch, or something like that. It feels like that seems like a weird oversight to take them to King's Row. It just oh, Gangnam Jin gets caught trying to close the distance. Like, yeah, they just. Dragons just seem to know how to play against this right now with their brawl of just like staying around it, holding a controlling position and making it so that they can never go into the back line, right? Like, look at how hard they're trying to get there, but they're just so slow. Like, they even get Izayaki, but at that point, it's, it's already over. The only assumption is that they don't think they're better on the monkey comp. Yeah, but... They can be. Like, I, it feels like that's they've gotten to this position. Florida got to this position playing that Winston Cup. I would be shocked if they were confident enough in it to go up against the Dragons. Because Dragon, I don't think the Dragons Winston Cup is that good. Like, it's solid, right? Like, it's, it's definitely solid, but I think Mayhem might be better. It, it'll at least be more competitive, I think, than what we're seeing here. That's a good Bob. Oh, I like this High Noon by BQB. Yeah, that's a very good High Noon. Ah, Fate Primal again. He should not have Primal. Oh my god, is this where we get the Fate Orissa? I just remembered what's about to happen here. So Fate, Fate, shouldn't have used his Primal there. He couldn't get any value done with it. Oh, it gets shattered. Why can't Fuel play Rush? Because he's their coach. Haha. <laughs> -ha. Just living, but he, he shouldn't have Primal to live. If you lose... He lost his Echo and his Anna, I think it was, or his Mercy. Just die. Like, you know, playing to, uh, using an ult to live at that point, like, it doesn't, like, as you saw, his Primal's not going to change the course of that team fight. Hello. Thought the Orisa was first Dallas. Why do I feel like it was here? I think it might be here. Maybe it was versus Dallas. We'll see. We'll see. If anything, it stalled him here? Yeah, so, we'll see how they go. Because all of a sudden, the Mayhem have the advantage, right? I think Mayhem hold this corner. It's very hard for Dragons to get any position while also walking up because they can get sped on at any point. Gargoyle needs to be careful he doesn't get isolated on this left side though. Don't go door. Oh, did they just amp? Amp was way too early. If Shanghai recognized this, they're in a big spot, yeah. Amp was way too early for the for the mayhem. They they wanted to go. They turned the corner and realized it was too it was it was way too early. So they had the lamp, and that's just a window for the dragons. Throw the deeper bomb in. Nano the Winston. Oh, damn! Fake. I think Fake could have committed better to that. I think he could have overcommitted on that one, and then like got a lot more value. There goes the mail. Oh, the mail's very good. Void does get BQB out of that, though, as well. Does Gargoyle have bombs? So Gargoyle can stall with bomb here, which is nice. That was a good catch by... It. Yeah. That, that'll, that's on the back of Yaki. Uh, that was a really good Yaki ult. Great Yaki ult. Really put a pin on that. Nano Monkey strong. Yeah, Nano Monkey very strong. All right, let's go. Hey. 60 seconds remaining. Didn't Yaki play his hard out also? Yeah, Yaki's just a great player. I'm interested that he switches... Oh, well, I guess Mayhem switched to the monkey dive. I didn't even realize that until right now. Oh, OGE. That was a... That was a feed. That's a really big problem as well, because they all overcommitted. They overcommitted on the dive, I feel like. I don't really like the Winston switch. I feel like they should have stayed. 
I think it, by playing the win, if they're gonna play that Winston, then maybe they need a beat engage. But yeah, all right, they have a B yeah BQB's isolated now. Yaki's stuck behind. I think Florida kind of played themselves a little bit here, trying to go too aggressive with the Winston. B was good. Fate's got Gangnam Jin in the corner. That should just be it. They got Fletter though. Wow, they just cannot punish Yaki. Wow, Dragons, unsurprised Dragons didn't close that out. That kill on the Fletter was really big. Fate Primal was okay, but not great. Diva Bomb is very good. Is very good. That even hit OG. That was a that was a great oh. Letter number, laughing emote. Wow, it didn't even hit overtime. Yeah, I'm sure nobody was really aware of the point at that point. Like, you very rarely until it, like you don't think that you need to touch the card in that situation until you see the overtime and you can, it starts like it's like a mental trigger in your brain. But yeah, that's interesting. Who has the best echo in Dallas? Sparkle and Dollar have both been very good at it. OG have definitely been stepping up. Maybe it's just because of main tank, but I hope for his high hopes for him to go up. Uh, yeah, I think OG's been good. Like, the, the question has always been for everyone. It's not whether or not OG's talented, especially mechanically. The question is, can he remain consistent? He's obviously was very good throughout the entirety of the May Melee, but, you know, we've seen him historically have very good stints and runs on both the Gladiators and Dallas Fuel, right? It's about can he keep that consistency throughout the entirety of the season. It seems like he's getting a lot more support and a lot better uh, teamwork around him. So maybe like that is the reason for his inconsistency. And hopefully this season he can prove everyone that he like deserves to be here. Because this is kind of like, I think if OG fizzles, fizzles out of the mayhem, I don't know who's going to touch him. Defend objective A. OG, yeah, OG is a very vocal player from what we've seen, so. Uh, we're going to have Dragons play the Wrecking Ball Zen Comp on defense. Interesting. I don't really like it, but we'll see how it plays out. Don't worry, Kasa can't speak English. Oh, yeah, I just assume it's my terrible reading. So, don't worry about that. All right, OG goes up. Don't need to overcommit on that. Nice job, nice job. Everyone chilling. Just heal up Gargoyle and Fate uh, and OG. We're going. We're chilling. 60% to Nano. Izyaki's getting a lot of damage in. Who's Izyaki doing so much damage to? They need to go. I swear to God, if they do it like they did on Gibraltar and they dive too early and die before they get their Nano, I'm going to fucking scream. Gargoyle. What have we talked about feeding? All right, we got the nano. Time to go, baby. Let's go. Here's Izyaki. Izyaki's up here. Get him. Okay, we're gonna go with the nano, guys. They also have Valk now. You see the Zen. Get him. Nano the nano the Winston. Nano the Winston. Nano the Winston. Nano the Winston. Whenever we're ready, we're gonna nano the Winston. Let's well, nano the Winston. Oh, here we go. They're all upstairs. Yeah, none of the Winston. Here we go. None of the Winston. None of the Winston. Yeah! Is Yaki has trance. It's too slow. Too slow. Too slow. They, there's a win condition, especially against this Zen Wrecking Ball comp. There's like a window of like 10 to 15 seconds where you will usually always get Transcendence before they get the... You'll always get the Nano before they get the Transcendence. Fake OG goes so late that the point that Izyaki gets the, uh, the Transcendence, and that's just the easiest play ever for him, right? Alright, BQB gets Fate though, which is pretty good. Oh, 
Alright, there's a pretty good dive. Nice play by OG. Gets the punish onto uh, Izayaki. Flat against Yaki, though. How does that even happen? The fuck is. What the hell's Yaki? Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. They get. Alright, this is pretty good, though. Not the bad, not bad. Cuz, so why aren't you doing a Vodri with Pine Stream? I swear to God, Gray. Oh! Swing and a miss from Void. He got a little greedy, tried to get everybody. All oh, fates, one health. Yaki gets Lee J gun. Izyaki gets BQB. Dude, Izyaki, so good. This is actually chaos right now. 60 seconds remaining. Yo, Celtics fan, thank you very much for the Prime Gaming sub. Welcome to the fam. Gago gets Void. That's a really good high noon. Yeah, that's a very good high noon. It's kind of what he was trying to do on Hanamura in the map before, where it's like they have to touch the point or lose while he has the high noon up. Why are the mines there? This is what the backline was. The mines weren't awful. They didn't end up getting any value because Fate just had to run away from them after it was done. But yeah, that's the reasoning. I don't think I like the Wrecking Ball Zen anywhere near as much on this second point because it's so linear. Hello. I'm cute. Oh, okay, Fate switches to Wizard. That'll do it. Uh, Izyak has the trance, so I don't mind him staying on the Zen for this as well. Can't believe Kasa hates Paddock. He heard it here first, guys. Oh, Izyaki, good, good, uh, good of him to hold the transcendence. Wow, great stick by Fla- Oh, Izyaki! Greedy, greedy boy. Greedy. Look at this. Goes to 60 health, gets healthy. Look at him. He's standing in the middle, just- Hoping and he just gets murdered. Ah, oh, that was so greedy by Izayaki. That cost- that's gonna cost them a lot. That might even cost them more than- that might cost them the whole second point. The shared pain of a support player watching a support player? Yeah, I've uh... I've been there many a times in my career where you're trying to- you're- you're just trying to get maximum value out of the Transcendence. He- he wanted to bait mayhem in more and more and more, right? He wanted to get more out of them and get more value, and then get the high value transcendence, which is admirable, but that is the worst case scenario, right? Like, oh, he already wanted to switch to Ana before this fight, right? So he wanted to get rid of this transcendence, so now he's stuck on the transcendence once again, and now it's a really shit time for a transcendence, right? He's gonna have to use transcendence to just close the distance. I remember this fight. I remember watching this live, and here is everything... And this just seemed like a really bad decision by the Mayhem. I remember watching this and being like, why does Mayhem go fast? Look at this fight, right? So let's let's do a thought experiment. You have the Forward of Mayhem. You have Winston Primal Rage, you have Diva Bomb, you have a Rally coming up as well, and you almost have a High Noon, okay? The Dragons only really have Transcendence, and they should know that. Probably Diva Bomb as well. You have card advantage, the card is pushing, you have a massive advantage. The dragons are going to have to use either the Diva Bomb or the Transcendence to close the gap, right? That is- that's- that's not how dragons are gonna have to do that. If you're the Mayhem, you force out those ultimates and then re-engage with yours, right? The worst thing, in my opinion, that you can do is engage first. Because if you engage first with the Mayhem, you are giving them advantage out of their Diva Bomb, out of their Transcendence. All of a sudden, if you engage first, he can use Transcendence and it's actually valuable and they can still get to the point. If you use Diva Bomb, like, then all of a sudden they can probably hide Transcendence, touch the point. So you're giving something for free when Izayaki's probably going to have to use Transcendence to get to the point. Because Fate's going to jump there, but almost instantly die. So he's going to need to use the Transcendence first. Let's see what the Mayhem do in this situation, right? Because I remember being very upset because, like, Mayhem should have this point on lock, right? 
Because look how far, like, the Echo Diva aren't even in this fight. This fight is so skewed towards the mayhem. It's kind of crazy. But they Diva Bomb engage, and OG jumps in and instantly primals. The Diva Bomb ends up in a really poor area. Izaki does exactly what I say, where him and Fate have to go to the point. They have to. Regardless of everything, they have to go to the point. So Izaki can just step up, use the Transcendence. The Transcendence automatically mitigates the threat of the cart, the Diva Bomb, and the Primal, and they get onto the point. So now all of a sudden this Transcendence gets crazy high value, Izaki's able to play on the point, and they they don't have any of their ults. All of a sudden, they now Lip has a Bob. Now Void has a Diva Bomb. Void can now contest on the cart for free because he has a diva bomb. He can just stay on it permanently. The bob comes through, kills Yaki, and the entire advantage, they didn't even get value out of the rally before they lost the fight because they went too early. Some really weird decisions that we don't really see from the Florida Mayhem, but just, it, like, you can just see how much that cost them, right? I don't know who wins this fight. Re regardless, it was poor by the Florida Mayhem, right? So here comes the diva bomb. Oh God, that's a bad bash on the diva bomb. Yo! Support players help support players. Look at that. That was a sick play by Slime and Gangnam Jin. And Slime dies because he doesn't have shield. And that's and that's the fight, right? Like that you can't you can't lose fights like that. All of a sudden, they, those are literally map losing fights when Brick has, like, now all of a sudden, dragons, they didn't have to use their whole, like, thing. Izaki almost has another transcendence because he's an absolute fucking nut job. Uh, Lee Jagon has rally, Fate has primal, Fleta has copy soon. What do you do? That cost Mayhem literally everything to try and close out that fight. He may have died, but it was cute. Yeah, but he saved Gangnam Jin, and that's what's important. Florida legit needs to just chill. Yeah, and I agree. I think this is, this is, they're getting just too ahead of themselves in this entire series. And it's cost, it's cost them multiple times. It cost them on their Hanamura attack. Cost them here. Um, on their Brawl uh, Oasis, I don't think it cost them too much on the, I don't remember anything crazy like that. Lee J got, they're going to rally engage. I actually kind of like this. Until now. <laughs> Where is Fleta? So they rally engage, but their DPS players are both over here. BQB is lip, sorry, is actually in Narnia, and Fleta gets isolated by Aki. Yeah, that that seemed like a good call if they committed to it, but they didn't really commit to it with their DPS. Oh, Izayaki kills me. Izayaki's just too goddamn good. Oh! Oh! Revaven! Thank you very much for the fresh sub. Welcome to the fam. Now they do get the nano off, but Izayaki's got another transcendence. Should just nanofy the value of that nano. There's a bob. That's a problem. And that's it. That's that's the ball game. Victory. Pretty disappointing series from Shang uh, from Florida Mayhem, seeing as how good of a May melee they had. But you can just maybe you can attribute these poor decisions to tiredness to anything. But end of the day, they didn't play well. Um, I think Gago really struggled that series. I think Slime struggled that series. But even just individual, like just teamwork and synergy just wasn't really there. Dragons didn't play flawlessly. Like they didn't. They had some great individual things. But I think that is why you see they go into the next series and they get found out a little bit. Um, and that's why, you know, Dallas Fuel were the best. They were just the cleanest team. They just play in such harmony and synergy that it's just hard to overcome. So disappointing for the Florida Mayhem that it was their, their end of their run. They came third. Dragons go on to the grand finals against Fuel, which we will review probably tomorrow. So thank you very much for watching YouTube. Peace out. Have a good night.